ancient biotechnology of the gods, knowledge to create and control humans. Who were the Anunnaki and why do we care? We have, first of all, so many ancient texts concerning extraterrestrials, Anunnaki's from the skies, controlling everything on earth. The Anunnaki were the deity pantheon of the ancient Sumerians and also, of course, the ancient Greeks. An interest in the Sumerian culture has been active and persistent since it was discovered in the 19th century. What if the technology that modern humans believe they have accomplished by themselves is a gift of the ancient gods? It's possible that the modernization in our world is actually the ancient knowledge once possessed by our ancestors. Ancient texts of different cultures contain legends, stories, and descriptions of technologies such as weaponry, aviation, biology, genetics, and even computers that comply with the present advanced technology humans have. Sumerians, Egyptians, Mesoamericans, ancient Greeks, ancient Egyptians, ancient Indians, South Asia, perhaps responsible for the major development in the Homo sapien civilizations. Quoting Desmond Morris, quote, there are 193 living species of monkeys and apes. 192 of them are covered with hair. The exception is a naked ape itself, a self-named Homo sapiens, end quote. Did nature or some external force enhance human intelligence? The possible answer to it exists in biotechnology. Tales from various sources suggest that the gods possessed an advanced knowledge of biology many millennia ago. An Egyptian god, Thoth. I have uh, the Emerald Tablets written by Thoth the Atlantean for you on the playlist on the Emerald Tablets. What he writes there is a tremendous description of the very advanced technology they had. They had interstellar travel. They even had interdimensional travel. So the Egyptian god Thoth helped Isis, the wife of Osiris, to extract from the dismemberment or Osiris, the semen with which Isis was impregnated to bear Horus. The similar biological incident can be traced to the Hindu epic Mahabharata, where Gandhari, a wife of this Dhritrashtra, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I don't see that, I'm not saying it properly. Dhritrashtra, the blind king of Hatnitinapura, gave birth to 100 children, Kauravas, artificially, similar to in vitro fertilization process that we know today. World history writes, the urgency of giving birth to sons was hidden in the reason that Whoever of Kunti and Gandhari gives birth to sons first would probably be favored for the Hastinapur throne in their succession plan. Gandhari went to Dwapayana and complained about the lump of mass and doubled the Rishi's boon, to which Dwapayana affirmed he had never spoken a lie, even in jest. He then asked Gandhari to cut the lump of mass into a hundred pieces and place it in a hundred different pots filled with clarified butter and weight. On Gandhari's request of a daughter, the pieces were cut into a hundred one pieces. The boon finally fructified and the first Kaurava Darihana Dari Daryodana was born, followed by his 99 brothers of which Dushasana became his favorite and daughter Dusala. Another great example of human biotechnology can be found in the biblical verse, before I, God, formed you human in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appoint you as a prophet to the nations, Jeremiah 1.5. Not, not one sparrow will fall to the ground without your father knowledge, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered, Matthew 10, 29, and 30. In addition to this illustration about the sparrows, Jesus says, the very hairs of your head are all numbered, according to uh, J.W. Org. This brief but profound statement amplifies the point of Jesus' illustration about the sparrows. Consider the average human head is about 100,000 strands of hair. For the most part, one hair seems just like the next, and no single hair seems to deserve our particular scrutiny, 
Yet each hair is noticed and numbered by Jehovah God. Since this is the case, is there any detail of our life that Jehovah cannot know? Surely Jehovah understands the unique makeup of each of his servants, end quote. Okay, this is also spiritual. Uh, I'm not going to go and uh, um, equate uh, the God of the Bible with Anunnaki, which could be followed, of course, fallen angels. Now, uh, from Tales of Ancient Egypt by Roger Lansley Green, he says, Though it is said that in truth Zeus, the ancient god of Olympus, Zeus, king of the gods, whom you call Amun-Ra, was her father, Seti nodded when he heard this and murmured, even as Amun-Ra was the father of Hatshepsut, yes, the gods can indeed be the fathers of the spirits that dwell in the bodies of kings and queens. In his discussion of the Sumerian story of the creation of Adam, the earthling, from Mesopotamian text clay tablets, Zechariah Sitchin in 1985 writes, to achieve the feat, Enki suggested that a being that already exists, ape woman, be used to create the Lulu Amelu, the mixed worker, by binding upon the less evolved beings the mold of the gods. The goddess Sud purified the essence of a young male, Anunnaki. She mixed it into the egg of an ape woman. The fertilized egg was then implanted in the womb of a female Anunnaki for the required period of pregnancy. When the mixed creature was born, Sud lifted him up and shouted, I have created, my hands have made it. From these stories, it can be speculated that ancient gods had great knowledge of genetics and manipulated human DNA and genes on several occasions. Comparing these instances with modern science, then Sitchin's story depicts the current technique of cross-species cell transfer, CSCT. While the custom of the ancient gods, god kings of Mesopotamia and Egypt of marrying their sisters and reproducing without apparent damage to the family gene pool would have been possible using the technique of cloned cross-species cell, cell transfer, CCSCT. Additionally, Oannes, as described by the Babylonian priest Berosus, had the form of a fish, but with the head of a man under his fish's head and under his fish's tail. The feet of a man could have resulted from the modern human embryonic stem cell technique. In summary, it appears that our current knowledge of animal biology and physiology permits a close understanding of how the gods might have accomplished their bioengineering feats. This was published on House and Wise on Collective Spark. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.